Echelon Connect for Sunny 1805. Which is the better bike? Let's find out. In today's video, we're gonna take a closer look at the $500 Echelon Connect and see how it compares to the $600 Sunny 1805. Each of these two bikes has a lot of similarities and a lot of differences, so let's start out with the similarities. Both of these bikes are magnetic resistance and belt driven. The Echelon Connect has a very unique look because the flywheel is enclosed in housing and the flywheel mass on the Sunny 1805 is significantly more and that affects the drivetrain feel which we'll get into in just a moment. Also, the Sunny 1805 has a different maximum resistance than the Echelon Connect. But first, let's take a look at some of the other differences between these two bikes. One of the major differences is the Echelon Connect is Bluetooth enabled. And even though neither one of these bikes comes with any sort of screen on it, the Echelon Connect you can bring your own phone or tablet to get your metrics. And when you do connect up your phone, you can get your cadence and resistance and power output on the freestyle mode within the Echelon app. You don't need to pay for that. In comparison, the Sunny 1805 doesn't come with any sort of screen up here on the handlebars either. However, the major difference is there is no Bluetooth connectivity on the Sunny 1805. So if you did want to get your cadence, you would need to attach something like the Wahoo cadence sensor, which would go right on the crank arm down here. And even though you're not going to get your metrics on the Echelon Connect app, you can simply pull up the Peloton app on either one of these bikes. And here you can see I'm playing a Peloton class on my phone, but you could bring a tablet up here and throw it up here on the tablet holder. And of course you could do the same exact thing over here on the Echelon Connect. However, if you want those metrics displayed, you would need to bring two separate devices. One good thing that both of these bikes has going for them is neither one of them is going to lock you into any one particular platform. You could uh, do the new Apple Fitness Plus classes on either one, Les Mills, or really any sort of classes you'd like to do. Unlike on the Peloton bike, you're basically stuck with only that Peloton All Access membership. You could take either one of these bikes and set them up in front of a TV and watch whatever you want. Here's what the resistance knob looks like over here on the Sunny 1805. It is a physical resistance knob that controls a magnetic resistance and the Echelon Connect resistance knob works in almost the exact same way. It is a physical resistance knob that controls a magnetic resistance. One difference between these two resistance knobs is the Echelon takes about 32 turns to get from 0 to 32 on my bike and 32 is the max resistance on the Echelon Connect here that costs 500 bucks. And in comparison, the Sunny 1805 takes only eight turns to get from minimum resistance to maximum resistance, which I should point out, there are no numbers associated with those resistance numbers. And we're gonna do a head-to-head -head comparison here in just a minute of how the resistances feel and what the maximum resistances compare like head-to-head -head in a moment. But first, let's take a look at the adjustability. First of all, I just wanna say the Sunny 1805 is much more adjustable than the Echelon Connect. The very first thing I wanna show you is the handlebars can go forwards and backwards on the Sunny 1805. All you need to do is loosen that up and you can move them forwards and backwards quite a bit. On the Echelon Connect, these handlebars are locked into place in terms of going forwards and backwards you only get one position. Additionally, in terms of raising and lowering the handlebar stem, there are no holes that you need to click into on the Sunny 1805 so you can get micro adjustments down to the millimeter. The same exact thing is true on the back for the raising and lowering the seat on the Sunny 1805. There's no holes to click into. And in addition, there are no holes to click into for moving the seat forwards and backwards as well. So you also get micro adjustments. On the Echelon Connect, there are holes you need to click into for raising and lowering the handlebars as well as the seat post. The holes are spaced about 15 millimeters apart. So the adjustments are pretty good but not as good as the sunny. And I apologize for the terrible lighting here today. It's actually a cloudy day in Los Angeles, but there are actually holes you need to click into on the back of the seat post. And there are 17 holes you can choose from. However, for moving the seat forwards and backwards, you don't have to click into any holes, so you do get those micro adjustments for moving the seat back and forth. And speaking of seats, here's what the saddle looks like on the $500 Echelon Connect. It's kind of like a medium wideness, not the most narrow or the most wide saddle I've seen. Definitely got a little bit of squish to it. Whereas in comparison, the saddle on the Sunny 1805 is uh, quite a bit wider and also has a little bit of squish to it. There's a cutout in the middle and some fairly firm springs on the bottom side. If you're looking for a wide and comfortable saddle, probably the Sunny 1805 has a slightly better setup for that. However, everybody has their own saddle preferences at the end of the day. 
Each of these bikes has a single water bottle holder. The Sunny puts it off to the right up here on the front fork, so it's not gonna get in the way if you wanna put something really tall in there. In comparison on the Echelon Connect, the water bottle holder is in the center here, and you're kind of limited in how big of a water bottle you can put in, because it will hit the resistance knob if it's too big. In terms of the adjustability, one thing I would like to point out about these two bikes is the Sunny 1805, and it seems like Sunny bikes in general have the ability to raise the saddle height higher uh, than a lot of other bikes, and in particular, the Echelon Connect. So if you're a really particularly tall person, uh, the Sunny 1805 might be better for you. Another thing I'd like to point out about these two bikes is the Echelon Connect handlebars can actually raise up just a little bit higher than the Sunny 1805. I mean, maybe like an inch. Let's take a look at the handlebars. The handlebars on the Sunny 1805 are very unique. Quick comparison over here on the Echelon Connect. You can see this is what the handlebars look like. Every time I look at the Sunny 1805, it kind of reminds me of like a reindeer. I don't know if it's just like the time of the year or what, but it's kind of just like these two long horns kind of sticking out uh, parallel to each other. So it really gives you a lot of variability in how far you want to get stretched out on this thing. Also, there is a flat connector, a flat bar along the bottom, and it's also straight and flat looking at it from this perspective. So you do get a few hand grip positions available on this bike. Also, when you're up out of the saddle in position number three, you get that narrow and wide grip ability. Taking a look at it from the side perspective, you see that they kind of slant up and then slant up even more out here. And on the Echelon Connect, it's a kind of similar thing, although they slant up a little bit more on the Echelon Connect, and you kind of get more of a traditional handlebar length on the Echelon Connect. Now this particular bike is the Echelon Connect Prime, which is being replaced by the Echelon EX15, and it's also very similar to the Echelon Connect Sport from Walmart. However, the handlebar positions on the Echelon Connect Sport are a little bit different than this bike, but this is what they look like on the bike I have. I do think these handlebars on the Prime have room for improvement. I don't really like the bow part down here at the bottom because you don't get any sort of flat bar across. However, like I said, it is different on the Echelon Connect Sport from Walmart. Both of the handlebars are very grippy, nice rubberized material, and very thick diameter, uh, almost the same. In terms of the geometry of the bike, I would like to point out both of these bikes do operate the same way, whereas when you raise the seat, the whole thing kind of goes back. Same for the handlebars, when you raise them, they come closer to you. On the Echelon Connect, they also raise and come closer to you, and the seat goes back as you raise it up. And that's pretty much the typical format for geometry of these indoor bikes. In terms of maximum user weight, both of these bikes are technically listed at a maximum weight of 300 pounds for the user. However, uh, we'll get more into the drivetrains here and the maximum resistance because uh, the Sunny 1805 is actually has a heavier flywheel, which we'll talk about more in a moment. And also the maximum resistance on the Sunny 1805 is stronger than the Echelon Connect, the $500 version of the Echelon Connect. So now what I'm gonna do is hop on each of these bikes head to head and give you my thoughts and opinions and compare them head to head, tell you what the drivetrains feel like and what that maximum resistance actually feels like on the bikes. One last thing I wanna point out for you about the similarities and differences is they both come with cage style pedals and there is no clip-in cleat on the pedal. However, each of the pedals has the ability for you to add that clip if you'd like. The Sunny 1805 actually has the exact same pedals as the Schwinn IC4. Here's what the Schwinn IC4 pedal looks like. It's the exact same. This one just has the clip-in cleat on it. The Echelon Connect pedal also has the ability for you to add that clip-in cleat on here, and it has a cage style pedal on the other side for a more casual rider. I really wish that both of these bikes would have given you that clip directly on the pedal so you could clip in, because it does make for a better riding experience. In case you're wondering what pedals I recommend, these are the SPD Shimano pedals I use. We actually have these on our Peloton Bike Plus, and I'm very happy with them. So now I'm gonna hop on both these bikes back to back, compare the drivetrains and compare the maximum resistance, and then we'll also compare it to the Peloton Bike Plus to see how each of these bikes stacks up and compares max resistance wise to one another and the Peloton Bike Plus. So I'm gonna start on the Sunny 1805, and this seat is actually not on the maximum height. I'm six foot five, Insane's about 34, and I have this seat on about 22 and a half out of 25. The handlebars are on max height, and they're kind of in a medium adjustment for forwards and backwards. For starters, I have this bike on the minimum resistance, and I'm just gonna kind of start pedaling and tell you my initial thoughts on the Sunny 1805. So 
So right away, I can tell, starting turn, turning the pedals over, the flywheel mass on this bike is substantially heavier than the flywheel mass on the Echelon Connect. The flywheel on this bike is like the most significant difference between these two bikes uh, once you get on them and start pedaling them, and you can feel it right away. The inertia of the flywheel on the Sunny 1805 is really good because the flywheel has a big diameter. It looks like a lot of that mass is on the outside edge of the uh, flywheel. And so like when I go to stop pedaling, it tends to try to just continue to carry that inertia, which is really good for maintaining a steady cadence. So another thing that's really nice about this bike is you can adjust the handlebars forward and backwards, which I already mentioned. So I, you know, I can get those handlebars closer to me if I want them to be closer for a more upright riding position. And that really just helps you fine tune your riding position. Not only can you move the seat forwards and backwards to get uh, your knee over the proper place in the pedal stroke, you can also independently move the handlebars forwards and backwards to get comfortable. At six foot five, out of the saddle, as long as I keep my booty back how I should when I'm riding, my knees won't hit the handlebars. However, if I do lean forward, it is possible for me to hit my knees. However, really what I'm noticing riding out of the saddle on minimum resistance is that cadence is really just kind of carrying those pedals through in each pedal stroke. I'm gonna pop the handlebars back out just a little bit here, lock them back in place. I also really like what Sonny did with the lever here, it's kind of off to the side. So you can adjust these handlebars up and down pretty easily from being on the front, like the front side of the bike here. You don't have to go around. Um, just makes it a little bit easier. Another thing I'd like to point out is neither of these bikes has a place for like a weight holder. So you would need to get some sort of extra accessory if you want weights on the bike. Anyway, before I start cranking up the resistance, that was all on minimum, let's go over there. Okay, so over here on the Echelon Connect, let me give you my very first impressions. The flywheel. The flywheel on this bike is 15.4 pounds, seven kilograms. Very, very light flywheel. Now that's not the end all be all, of course, you know. There's a lot of other components that go into drivetrain feel, but you can definitely tell a huge difference between this 15.4 pound flywheel versus the 44 pound flywheel on the Sunny 1805. Second thing I noticed is obviously metrics. On this bike, you know, I have my phone up here, I'm getting my cadence feedback, my resistance feedback, and all that stuff is neatly displayed up on the screen. Third observation on the Echelon Connect is saddle height. I have this seat on the maximum setting, handlebars are also on the maximum setting, and you know, I feel like the saddle does need to come up just a little bit higher for my height of six foot five. So if you're a taller person, it seems like Sunny bikes, Sunny makes really good bikes for tall people because that saddle height really comes up a lot higher than a lot of these other budget bikes I have. The SFB1002, as well as the 1805, saddle height comes up really high. A lot of these other bikes, including the Echelon Sport here you see me on, the saddle would need to come up just a little bit higher for a perfect riding position for me. So yeah, turning the pedals over, right away you notice like that inertia is just like, not, it's not on the same level as the Sunny 1805. Now this is like a really good value bike. You do get a lot of good things with it, like those metrics, the Bluetooth connection, but the inertia, I have to say, it's just not the same as the Sunny 1805. So let me add on just a little bit of resistance here. I am comfortable on this bike. I like this bike. This is a good bike. Let me add on just a little bit of resistance. So you have to turn the resistance knob on this particular bike quite a lot um, to get from one resistance to another. The Echelon has 32 levels of um, resistance. So on this bike, it's one turn is one resistance. So 32 turns to get from minimum to maximum. Another thing about the Echelon Connect bike is those resistances like really don't make a big difference for like the first like uh, 15 turns really. And then it starts to really kind of come on like heavy towards the end. So like right now I'm on resistance 18. Power output is measured at 180. Cadence is 100. So it is nice that I get those metrics up here on the screen. 
The bike does make a small amount of noise, but you know, it's pretty much silent for all intents and purposes. Drivetrain feels good, you know. I've rated this drivetrain feel pretty good on this bike on my official Tail Happy store. Uh, let me get back over there and add on some resistance. So I'm at about 50% resistance on the Echelon right now. Let's go over there. All right, so back over here on the Sunny 1805. And yeah, right away, um, you can tell, like I can tell a huge, huge difference in the way these two drivetrains feel. They both make a very quiet noise, not obnoxious. You can kind of hear them. Oh yeah, but that, the flywheel, the drivetrain feel on this bike so far, um, I'm digging it. So, um, like I was saying, on this bike, 32 resistance turns on my particular Echelon Connect that I bought on Amazon. So it does take a while to get from one resistance to another on the Echelon Connect. This bike is eight turns from minimum to maximum. So let me just go ahead and turn it a couple turns here. So we're on zero. There's no metrics, so that's kind of one downside if you like to see your resistance in terms of a number. You don't get that on the Sunny 1805. So one turn, didn't really notice much. Two turns, maybe a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Three turns. Yeah, you can feel the resistance coming on now for sure. Just kind of feeling out the drivetrain here. Uh, medium resistance, I mean, feels good. Feels good on the 1805. So yeah, no like power output metrics. You'd have to attach that Wahoo cadence sensor or something to get your cadence. And in terms of uh, power output, you'd have to hook up external stuff on the Sunny to be able to get those metrics. All right, so back up here on the Echelon. Still on resistance 18. I'm gonna crank it up more towards the maximum end and check out the maximum resistance on this bike and also the max resistance on that bike next. Resistance 21, 24, 26. Just crank it on up, max resistance. Whew. So yeah, I mean, max resistance is pretty good on this bike. So I'm six foot five, I weigh 190 pounds. This is what uh, max resistance looks like here on this bike. It's measuring my power output at about 260 at cadence 50. In the saddle, cadence 50, power, well, it's fallen. So let's go over there and feel out max resistance and resistance on the upper end of the spectrum there. All right, back over here on the 1805. First thing, you know, there's no output on this bike in terms of uh, resistance output. So I don't know where it is. I just remember I left it on turn four. Let me start over though, just make sure. One, two, three, four. Five? Oh yeah. Man, that resistance is already coming down. And I know I have three more turns left in it. Seven. Eight. So that's the max. Oh yeah. So I think max resistance on this bike is definitely stronger than the Echelon Connect. Oh yeah, I'm really feeling the burn. <laughs> I don't know what my cadence numbers are though, or my power output. Oh yeah, that's the heavy max resistance there. Oh. 
Let me go back. Oh yeah, this is on max resistance. Max resistance on the Sunny 1805, no doubt about it, much higher. So out of the saddle here, and crank this thing along. Cadence 80. Power output 440, which I don't believe that. I mean, that's pretty high. It is a lot of resistance though. I mean, it can wear you out. So still on max resistance over here on this bike. It's really, it just has a different feel to it too. The heavier flywheel. It feels like, uh, I don't know, like, I think that inertia is really kind of playing into the equation here for evening out that cadence. Oh man, that's a heavy max resistance. Bring it down here a few turns. All right, back to max. What can I do here? I do kind of like that these handlebars, these reindeer handlebars are so long. Uh, it really just gives you that opportunity to kind of like, really kind of choose how extended you want to get. You know, you can get down here for a short burst, you know, give yourself a lot of power. Kind of like lay on the handlebars, almost like a triathlete. On those uh, triathlete style handlebars, like this too. Like grabbing the inside handles and just resting your forearms on these handlebars. So very unique from the Sunny 1805. So max resistance here, like a triathlete. I like this bike. Let me crank it down. I mean, this is a really high max resistance. Let's see how they compare to the Peloton. All right, let's see how these compare to the Peloton in terms of max resistance. So that's on 85. This is on max. First opinion, I think actually, I don't know. This seems to be about 85 on the Peloton Bike Plus. Let me go back over there though. Yeah, maybe a little higher actually. 86, 87. Maybe 90. Yeah, probably like 85 or 90, I'd say. The 1805 is about equal to, on max resistance, to about 85 to 90 on the Peloton Bike Plus. Hopping straight back over here to the Echelon Connect on maximum resistance. Yep, not even close. Not even anywhere close. Nope. <laughs> so yeah, max resistance is kind of one of the downfalls of the Echelon Connect. I mean, it's hard to say, but I think max resistance on this Echelon Connect is about 60 on the Peloton Bike Plus. Okay, let me give you my summary and final thoughts on the Sunny 1805 versus the $500 Echelon Connect that you can buy on Walmart or uh, maybe on Amazon by now. The Echelon EX15, it's been out of stock for quite a while now. Uh, however, you know, uh, this is a $500 bike versus a $600 bike. And really, you know, I think it's gonna come down to what do you want in a bike? So let's talk about the benefits of the Sunny 1805. This bike is, uh, you know, kind of underground, under the radar, I think. A lot of people don't really know about this one. The Echelon Connect is extremely popular. Echelon, it's a big brand. A lot of people know about Echelon, Peloton, Sunny, however, I really like their products. You know, I have the 1002 back there, which we will be comparing that head to head against this magnetic version, the 1805. Uh, Sunny makes some good bikes, and this thing has a very heavy flywheel. It's magnetic resistance, 44 pound flywheel versus a flywheel that's 15.4 pounds. 
Max resistance, Sunny 1805 all day. The Sunny 1805 has a significantly higher max resistance than the Echelon Connect. You know, based on my quick comparison, I think the Echelon Connect compares to about, uh, max resistance on the Connect is about 60 or so versus the Peloton Bike Plus. The Sunny 1805, you know, like I just said, max resistance probably equates more to about 85-ish roughly, maybe a little bit higher. So max resistance on the 1805 will kick your butt. However, uh, the downside or the upside, depending on really how you look at this, the Echelon Connect comes with that Bluetooth connectivity. So, you know, you can throw your screen, you can throw your phone right up here on here and get your metrics such as cadence, which is very important to some people to have right out of the box, as well as you can check your resistance number measured from zero to 32 in a power output. However, on this bike, if you do wanna do something besides the Echelon classes, say you wanna do Peloton classes, you need to hook up two separate devices, like your phone, for example, on the Echelon app, free ride mode uh, is free. You don't have to pay for that. You do if you want the classes though, which you can get six months for free of Echelon classes, depending on when and where you buy it from and the promotions going on. But yeah, you would just throw a tablet up there in addition to uh, your smartphone. As I said before, the Sunny 1805 doesn't come with any screen whatsoever. Uh, so, you know, if you want your cadence or something like that, you're gonna need to get like a Wahoo cadence sensor, for example, throw it on the crank arm, hook up your own device there to get your metrics. Um, also, you know, put a tablet up here. You can do the Peloton Digital Classes, Apple Fitness Plus, whatever you want, you know. You're not locked into any particular platform with either one of these bikes. You can take either one of these things, throw it up in front of your big screen TV and speakers uh, and jam out in whatever platform or session you would like to do. If you want a wider saddle out of the box, the Sunny 1805 has that saddle over here on the Echelon. It's a little bit more narrow. Either one are fine though, honestly. It really just kind of depends on your own personal preference on saddle. Both of the bikes come with the cage style pedals on one side and neither one has the clip for you to clip in. However, there is that little hole that you can add your clip to the existing pedal. Sunny 1805, you can quickly get from one resistance to another. It goes from max to min in about eight turns. Pretty easy to turn. Physical connection to that magnetic resistance and the magnetic resistance on this Sunny 1805 feels really nice with that heavy flywheel. On this particular echelon, it takes quite a bit of turns, 32 turns to get from minimum to maximum resistance. And you know, the maximum resistance is kind of lacking a little bit on the echelon connect. Everybody already knows that though. Both of these bikes are rated at a 300 pound maximum user weight. It is interesting that they're both rated at 300 pounds max weight considering the maximum resistance on the Sunny 1805 is so much more. So it seems a little more conducive to a person that has more mass to throw around having that higher resistance. However, according to the manufacturer's specs, you can uh, be up to 300 pounds on either one of these bikes. As I mentioned before, the Sunny 1805 and the Sunny uh, 1002 back there um, are really good for tall people because that saddle height really comes up really high. I'm six foot five and I don't even have it on maximum height. Whereas on the Echelon Connect, I do have the saddle height on maximum height. And I, I think that it needs to be able to come up just a little bit more to be perfect for my height. So which bike would I choose? Well, I mean, it's a hard question to answer. It's really a personal preference. There is no right or wrong answer. Personally, for me, I think that I would choose the Sunny 1805 because that heavier flywheel and uh, the higher maximum seat height, you know, for my taller height, I think the drivetrain just feels better on the Sunny 1805. The magnetic resistance has a higher maximum resistance and you know the heavier weight just kind of gives the bike like a more of a quality feel it has more inertia and the flywheel on the sunny once you get it turning over and building up momentum uh, it really just kind of carries more inertia either bike though i mean you can get a good workout on either one of these bikes and i do have a link below this video in the description box if you want to take a closer look at the current pricing of either of these bikes or if you want to buy either bike uh, it does help support this channel if you do buy through the link in the description box, so I would greatly appreciate it if you're planning on buying either of these bikes to buy through the link down below. However, I'm not trying to convince you to buy either one of these bikes. They are both good machines with their own unique benefits. I will be comparing uh, these bikes against more bikes here in the background you see here, and I do have a lot more comparison videos and information on all kind of indoor cycling bikes. So uh, browse my channel, take a look around. Give me a thumbs up if this video has been beneficial to you. Any questions or comments you have, please leave down below this video and I'll try my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching guys, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video.